Ah, Dark Souls 2. A game full of character, amazing weapon designs, and mob bosses most easily beaten with oversized hunks of metal. Good thing that today, we're hitting things with spoons! Why a spoon, cousin? Why not an axe? Because it's dull, you twit! It'll hurt more! We're doing a Dark Souls 2 run using only the Handmaid's Ladle. As you can see, I have way too many hours in Dark Souls 2, but I have never attempted a real challenge run on my own. So, I decided to start with a run that pushes all my knowledge of the game to the absolute limit. The rules here are simple. No direct damage other than the ladle after I acquire it, no summons, and no glitching. Before we get started, I do want to make it clear that my video making setup is not finalized and the quality of my video and sound aren't perfect here as I record all my gameplay from the live streams I do here on YouTube. I'm improving with each video and stream I put out in the future and I really hope you come back to watch me on my journey sometime. Alright, let's get this show on the road. We begin our journey by heading to Hades Tower of Flame. Is it, is it Hades? Hi? Ugh, hate it. I know what you're thinking. That's not where you get the ladle. Well, you're correct, and believe me, I have a good reason. If you're unfamiliar, the best way to use the ladle involves two items, an old mundane stone and the dull ember. I'm attempting this run on Vanilla Dark Souls 2, which places the dull ember all the way back in Iron Keep. Scholar of the First Sin Edition makes this item much easier to obtain, but you know, I love pain, so here we are. In order to make this process a little more efficient, I plan to open the way to Iron Keep early via Huntsman's Cops. After a quick jog through Hades, some expert parkour, and high-fiving the Dragon Rider on the way out of the boss room, we say hello to our good friend Licia the only way we know how. Come on. See ya. All right. This nets us the rotunda lockstone we need to open the way, and nothing of value has been lost. Lockstone in hand, we head back to things betwixt and decide to trick two hippos into rolling off of a tree. The ladies living in the hut next door seem to be mildly entertained by our antics, and while poor in the way of money, they decided to give us the most valuable item in the land of Drang Laic, a soup spoon. The next visit we make is to the wizard Carhelion in No Man's Wharf. Until we get the ember, soup will need a way to do damage. Because, as you can imagine, a wooden spoon will not survive being slammed against plate armor and rocks for long. Carhelion sells magic weapon, which we learn with our extreme intelligence, and we head back to challenge our first threat, the last giant. It's important to point out now that my chat has the ability to affect my gameplay somewhat via my loyalty shop on stream. In particular, they enjoy taking away my ability to dodge roll. As expected, this happens, we get stepped on, and I had to try again. I persisted, and after staring at the giant's butt for far longer than I ever wanted to, our foe is felled. Come on, last giant. Oh! Easy boss! Easy boss. At this point, I decided the best path forward was to tackle the bosses standing between Soup and his precious dull Ember, the Skeleton Lords, Covetous Demon, and Mytha. I've beaten all of these fights countless times, and Mytha honestly concerned me the most of the three, so I was feeling pretty confident. Skeleton Lords was first. Should be pretty easy, right? Well, after nearly 45 minutes spent in the boss room and two deaths to one of the biggest pushovers in the game, I started to realize the trouble I had gotten myself into. This is a problem we will see repeated more than once in this video. Any boss fight involving crowds of enemies is exponentially more difficult for me due to the low poise damage and reach of the ladle. 
On the advice of my chat, we revisited Things Betwixt, which was now at New Game Plus One after I tried to trade up for an old mundane stone with the crows. I attempted to get the stone ring from the Cyclops. This obviously failed, and I took my frustration out on Milibeth. This was a huge mistake, as you may know, and I didn't, but we will revisit this moment later in the video. With nothing more than renewed patience, we jogged our way back to the Skeleton Lords and claimed our prize, Passage to the Harvest Valley. Day 2 of Soup's journey starts with a singular goal in mind. Claim the Dull Ember. On the way to the Iron Keep, I started farming the Hammersmiths in Harvest Valley for an old mundane stone. After much persistence and a fight with the Covetous Demon in which we see some rare RNG, one of the big boys drops the rock out of his pocket, we snatch it, and head into Earthen Peak. <gasps> we got it! Alright! Oh. Now, typically I have issues running past the mannequins in the Earthen Peak, but today's run to the boss room was pretty uneventful, much more smooth than I expected. Go me! And Soup challenges the Baleful Queen, Mytha. This fight was really problematic when using the buffed ladle, as even though we did burn the windmill, drain most of the poison in the area, every second Mytha does spend in the remaining poison, she recovers roughly four to five hits, worth of her health. This fight had to teach me extreme patience, extreme amounts of positioning, and in the end, suit prevailed. Oh my gosh! Easy boss! Oh, oh. oh my... Ah. With our path to the dull limber open, Chat and myself were feeling optimistic yet again. It should be easy run into Iron Keep, draw the bridge, and jump over to the Ember. What I did not count on was how utterly useless the Handmaid's Ladle makes your character in Iron Keep. The enemies are highly trained, heavily armored, impervious to all trickery, and they are fast. I foolishly believed I could run through, open the door, jump off this walkway straight onto the stairs and grab the Ember. I was dead wrong. According to this site on the internet I place all my trust into for this video, a psychotic episode is typically defined by three phases, the prodrome, acute, and recovery phases. During the prodrome phase, the individual starts to experience difficulty focusing, keeping track of what they are thinking, and irritability. Progressing into the acute phase is when delusions, very odd and disorganized speech or behaviors emerge. I was on full display. I was trapped in the Iron Keep so long, I was beginning to lose all hope. I kept jumping, kept falling, kept dying, kept rolling. It never ended. My chat eventually convinced me to try doing something I never do in Dark Souls 2, parrying the Elan Knight guarding the bridge lever. Somehow, it worked on the first try. I chalk it up to pure dumb luck, but shout out to Vicious for believing in me. After 35 minutes of pain in Iron Keep, we had our prize, and Soup was ready to make the ladle mundane and fused. So, come here. Let me ask you something. Do you remember earlier in the video when I got mad after the Skeleton Lords beat me? Yeah. This is where the Millibeth mistake came full circle for my ass. Due to my lack of knowledge regarding the ladle run and the stat respec process of Dark Souls 2 in general, I had built my character to maximize ease of progress up to the point of getting the Dull Ember. I had snatched a soul vessel on day one, sorry Kale, and planned to reallocate my stats once we had the mundane ladle we would be using for the rest of the game. When I took my frustration out on Millibeth during Mr. Bones' wild ride, I failed to realize this locked me out of speaking to Strowen, the firekeeper who would normally reallocate my stat points. 
typically in Dark Souls 2, if you kill an NPC you need to speak to, you can resurrect them at a gravestone that appears after their death, for a price. Well, Millibeth's grave did not appear immediately after she died. I was very confused, so I continued my run, and day two of Soup's journey ended with us reaching the Shaded Woods. I was prepared to make the best of the build we had. Soup returns on day three with fresh confidence, ready to take on the world. I had bonked the fire keepers before we went live. I was hoping the gravestones would eventually appear, but wasn't about to let our mistake hinder the machine of progress. Returning to the shaded woods, I made a beeline to Nashka. Even with a scuffed build, our damage was far better than the magic buffed ladle, and we beat her fairly easily, even getting a tail cut. Fun fact, I'd forgotten you can stand on this piece of stone to avoid Nashka's burrowing attack. The more you know. Pushing forward, we tackled the Prowling Mages boss fight next. Like the Skeleton Lords, this fight is typically extremely easy, but made much more difficult in my game due to the number of enemies and the ladle's lack of reach. In what may be the most embarrassing live moment of my streaming career, I died to the congregation in Prowling Mages. Sorry, Ornstein, you had to pay for that loss by proxy. Taking a detour, I decided to try out the Ruined Sentinels fight, just, just to see how difficult it would be. I had originally planned to skip the Sentinels and run straight to the Lost Center, based on our experience with the group bosses thus far, but in stark comparison to the Skeleton Lord's congregation and in the consequential biggest upset of my live streaming career, I clutched a win against the Ruin Sentinels and restored my dignity for the rest of day three. Aggravating. I guess if we could beat Skelly Lords, we could beat Ruin Sentinels. Let's go! Easy boss! Nice! At this point, we checked in on things betwixt and found the gravestone that we were actually looking for. So, with the Ruined Sentinel Souls in hand, we were able to reallocate the stat points and truly begin the mundane ladle build. I personally kept 20 points in adaptability just to help Soup's dodges a little bit. I'm no god. Soup's next stop was the Gutter and Black Gulch. We more or less had opened a path to the other three great souls, so we headed downstairs to challenge the Rotten. Spoilers. I got my ass kicked. I started getting a bit concerned that we didn't have the power and equipment needed to handle the great soul fights, so we paid Macduff a visit for some large titanite shards and headed back to Seldora to end day three with a grudge match on a not so old foe. Now a large portion of success in this ladle run I have found is self-confidence and consistency. This build does massively reduce damage compared to most builds until late in the game, and due to that, the player has to perform well for much longer than normal in every single boss fight. I retain that you can win almost any fight in the Souls series if you can do damage, but keeping consistency with your dodging and health management is a lot more difficult, but it is key. After dying again, I changed my strategy. We started targeting the weakest members of the congregation first, the Crawling and Shambling Hollows, and ended up winning the fight, regardless of how hard the final priest was hiding behind Magus' AoE attack. Day 3 ended on huge success. Day 4 of Soup's journey went smoothly for the most part. Our path to all four great souls was wide open, so we started with the Lost Center. Along the way, we made a friend, shout out to John Souls, you're pretty cool, and surprisingly found out the ladle is decent in PvP. Chat no rolled me on my run to the boss room, but I managed to open the door and enter the boss room before I accidentally rolled and was forced to take a loss. Them's the rules. The follow-up fight with the Lost Center went well, as you would expect. She is the easiest of the Great Souls and went down 
pretty quickly. After a quick detour to grab some titanite chunks and discovering that burning the earthen peak windmill drains the poison pool outside of the Harvest Valley bonfire, we made our way back to Seldora to fight the Duke's dear Freya. Oddly, the run up to Freya was a little bit more eventful than the actual fight. I learned the best way to navigate down the spider webs leading to the boss room, but through a combination of excellent Dark Souls 2 hitboxes and respawning baby spiders, we succumbed to her power three times in a row. Every good RPG needs a super boss, and Dark Souls 2 is no exception. In a normal run, it's typically the Ancient Dragon, and rest assured, we will be attempting that fight at the end of the ladle run. However, the real super boss of my run is the man I foolishly decided to attack next. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. We skipped that fight for now, much to my chat's dismay, and made our way to the old Iron King. This fight was fairly uneventful outside of some unusual spawn points for him. I love this boss and I really wish they gave him and the immediate area around him some better lore and a better boss arena. But with Iron King toasted, I jogged back to Seldora and got my revenge on Freya. Almost died to the spiders outside after the boss fog lifted, but we survived and ended up dueling the Duke and Vingarl's body for access to the primal bonfire. To wrap up loose ends, we returned to our old friend the Rotten, who I had completely forgotten we did not beat, and dished out a big spoonful of soup. With all four great souls in hand, soup has gained access to the Shrine of Winter and Drangleic Castle. This area is straightforward, and since we gave Lysia a helping hand on day one, she decided to not invade us on our way through. Now at this point in the run, due to a non-existent sleep schedule over the past month and my stream being later in the evening, I developed a pretty wicked brain fog by the time we made it here. My reaction time was slowing down and I started getting pretty frustrated with my own performance, but nevertheless we challenged Dragon Rider again, who had brought his cousin to the fight in retaliation for us getting his armor wet on day one. Oops. With little difficulty, we dispatched the Draconic Duo and proceeded to the depths of Dringlaic Castle. Now if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. I hope to see you back as this is the first of many challenges I have and will be attempting. I stream on this channel most every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday making the content you see here and future videos, so if you want to be a part of that, consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing. Oh yeah. Just one more thing. 